<laughs> We're Hi. gonna have some fun. Women. <laughs> I don't know which one is which. I'm Maggie. Sh Maggie yes. and Hi, Cheryl. I'm Cheryl. And Cheryl, you're the senior marketing consultant for Storage Solutions. Yeah. At Storage Diva on Twitter. I am, and I'm a, a product. I'm with Product Group for Ecologic, and I do technical marketing okay. for Ecologic. Very cool. So we kind of wanted to talk first of all about you know how you're enjoying the, the forum here and what your perspective is coming from Equalogic. Sure, I, I think it's it's really great. It's good to see the number of customers turn around and, and the sessions being so full and yeah. you know, very well accepted. So I think the energy level is really high and everybody's really excited what we're doing with Equalogic today and then where we're going next with it. So I think it's fun. Where are you going yeah. next? <laughs> well, we had some exciting announcements this that. morning, in fact. Yeah. We announced um, kind of our next couple of generations of products around file services for Equalogic and new firmware, so yeah. a lot of big things coming out. Yeah. Very cool. And you have a different yeah. take at all on the conference itself? Oh, well, it's been, just... a, it's been great so far. I, I've been at Dell for about six years, so okay. from before all of these storage acquisitions, and it's really nice to see um, how much we've done in the enterprise and being able to interact with all these customers. It's been a great couple of days so far. Very cool. Yeah. And you're staying till the rest of the conference, right? Yeah. We're here through till, the end. Yeah, yes. we're here till the till Thursday. To yeah. Finish it off. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I've actually noticed that people keep talking. I haven't been invited to any parties. I've had to work. But they say that, you know, that it's been a lot of fun on the back end as well. You know, work hard and play hard and, and uh, they've done a fantastic job. I, as far as I can tell, you know, for, from everybody I'm speaking to, they have very much the Absolutely. same Absolutely. reaction. Absolutely. And we hope you come out with us tonight. Now you're okay. invited. Okay. <laughs> Finally, I got an yes. official yes. invitation. You're officially invited. I've been to trying to play us. that one up all day. <laughs> See, now you met with the right people. Exactly. exactly. See, women have my back. This yeah. is a women's networking event right here. Exactly. <laughs> we just have a couple more here and there and go there and that's it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I have noticed that there uh, are, of course, more women than men around here. And that's actually one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about is being a woman in technology. Now, at Dell, they seem to have a higher ratio of, of men to women than other tech companies, which mm -hmm. is great. Um, but, you know, how... Why, first of all, did you go into technology? I liked solving problems. Okay. And from when I was a, a little kid, um, my parents kind of always exposed me to, you know, both uh, traditionally girl toys and boy toys. And <laughs> I, um, I certainly like built Lego things that my Barbies rode on. And you know, over time, <laughs> so it wasn't about dressing up the Barbies. No, it was about no, building things. No, it was about things. the gear for the Barbies. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, you know, and over time, I just really liked solving problems, and it seemed like the best place to do that was in technology. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but, you know, about the same thing. It, yeah. Uh, uh, my parents were engineers, and uh, we were brought up in that environment, so oh, we were two so girls to you. my dad, and, and it was always, you know, engineering talks when we were okay. growing up, and mathematics, and so, uh, you know, got into uh, computer science, and so it was a pretty easy decision to make. There's no yeah. thinking. Uh, about it, but uh, okay. you're right. You know, there's very few uh, women even going. Uh, you know, when doing undergrad uh, in a class of 40 people, there were like two women yeah. sitting the <laughs> in the front the of the class taking notes and working hard. The women so. are very, you know, <laughs> interested and engaged. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great. So. But you're marketing. And I've, I've kind of noticed that there are a lot of women who start out in one technology field or another and, and wind up going into marketing, mm -hmm. and social media these days. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I definitely have the technical background and yeah. um, like sort of that, that intersection of technology and marketing. That's interesting for me. Okay. Um, but I, I've noticed that too. Uh, like I've just become active on Twitter in, in the past couple months and it's really interesting the proportion in technology who are women on Twitter versus the proportion who are women in real life. It seems like uh, there are many more on Twitter, right? Or a higher right. percentage on Twitter. So I've, I've noticed that also. So it wasn't like a move that because you felt uh, in the technical aspect of the workforce, you didn't feel 
uh, put down by men or anything like that? So you wanted to move, change a little no, bit? No, I've okay. never, I never felt put down. I, I came out of a sales role and just wanted to try a okay. different part of a company. And okay. Michael Dell bought a, a storage company an hour from my house. I owe him a thank you note. Nice. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think um, you know it's the social aspect of women too, right? Yeah. We're we're so in general so outgoing and yeah. you know like to get feedback and talk to people. I think that um, entails in marketing you need to do that uh, quite a bit. So it's a good mix, uh, you know, getting into having uh, you know I always explain my role as being technical marketing and it seems to be very counter, you know, intuitive. Two things not going together, but I think it totally does because yeah. um, you know even in the technical side. There is a lot to market, um, so that's just my take on it. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I think um, one of the uh, women in technology is, is a very hot topic at, at the moment, and which is why I was thrilled to be able to sit down with you guys. Um, and I think one of the main consensus is consensus. Consensus. I don't know what that word is either. <laughs> Thank you. No, I don't feel so dumb. Uh, is that you have to catch them early. You know, it's not about girls that are not interested in technology subjects or even science and engineering and all of that. It's not that we're not interested in it as a young as a young person but that we're just not exposed to the fact that we have that ability. Because, like you were saying, you know, we're very outgoing. We have these conversations. We're good at engaging people. We're good at, you know, being interested in people. I think women just tend to be more interested in people than hmm. men are in, you know, generally speaking. I'm totally stereotyping here. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, is that... Is, are we being shifted as kids moving in a different direction than technology fields? And I think that seems to have been the case. And I think it's changing right now. Are you guys involved in any you know, organizations or anything like that? That yeah, probably not, right? I'm, I'm not yeah. either, but... No, I, I'm not, and I, you know, shame... <laughs> no offense, know, but shame yeah. on all three of us. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, because yeah. I, I agree that it's it's definitely really young. I mean, you can almost see the difference in, like, a fifth-grade classroom and a seventh-grade classroom. Yeah. Kind of that engagement. Um, and I think a lot of times with, um, with, with younger girls... If there's like a math problem or something, they feel like they need to get the answer and then raise their hand and provide it. Whereas the guys kind of jump up in the front of the room around, you know, 12, 13 years old and they're like, ooh, ooh, I know. And then they think it through in front of everybody. Right. You know, and, and over time, I think that turns into women feeling like, ah, oh, they're not as good at it. And it's just, it's a different way of presenting, it's right? It's a different of, yeah. thought process. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think mentorship at a young age would be a great thing. And we, sh we should all, <laughs> we should make a patch that actually, we're going to go do yes, that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I've actually been looking at different organizations uh -huh. and I'm kind of a do-it-myself kind of person so I, I haven't really found one that I really like it's exactly like what's going yeah, yeah what's, what's happening the, the idea itself mm -hmm. is great on all the organizations but uh, I guess I'm kind of do it my mm -hmm. own way. Right. Kind of I person, think a lot so. of times with these organizations, we approach um, very differently too. So, uh, for example, I'm part of I'm doing part time MBA, okay. and I'm part of the women's group at Babson College. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where I'm doing my MBA from. But everybody in the group is uh, in the technology field. You know, it's so it's it's the part of the team is all doing the same stuff so yeah. we should actually be going out and uh, fetching more people rather than just broadening yeah. the scope that we already have right sure and similarly there there are some other groups uh, within Dell too or you know the women conferences that we go to everybody yeah. is in the technology so we need to go out and do more so yeah. I think we need to make a pact I, yeah. <laughs> I have tried to do it with some of the younger women at work yeah um, and you know by, by by this point, they've kind of already been through seventh grade, most of them. So, you know, it's not quite catching them that young. But I, you know, I, I definitely can even see a difference um, in who raises their hand and okay. and who volunteers for things, and you know, who thinks that like Cheryl Sandberg at Facebook, her her talk about who thinks they deserve a seat at the table. Yeah. You know, and so I've definitely tried to make sure that the younger women that I work with, you know, feel included and um, you know understand like the guys don't all know the answers either, and and they right. don't always think that way I think so well and one of the other things is is that girls at that age tend to want to impress the boys they're mm -hmm. they're aware of guys right. at that point right. whereas guys 
they're aware, but they're, you know. They just, bloom it, later. They, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's also being scared to speak up, being scared yeah. to ask questions mm-hmm. and get that information like you were talking about before. Um, you mentioned Sheryl Sandberg's talk, and I've uh, actually, I have that loaded on my computer, and I've been meaning to watch it. It's fabulous. It. But talk a little bit about what she she said there. It's fabulous. Um, she she has basically, so this was the, the TED Talk yeah. um, that she did, and, and um, she did a, a talk somewhere else that there's a transcript of, but it's a similar idea. Okay. Basically three things about women um, in the workplace and how to um, continue moving toward equality. You know, she talks about... Uh, uh, getting a seat at the table, so both, you know, uh, virtually a seat at the table, right. but us physically, if you walk in a room, don't be the person who sits on the sidelines, go sit at the table, um, which I've used a couple times since then, and it sometimes you get some weird stares, but, oh, okay. like, you deserve sitting there as much as anybody else does. Yeah, um, so that's one, and she talks um, with respect to um, having children, don't leave before you leave, so just because you've decided you're going to have a family doesn't mean that you have to stop looking for opportunities and promotions, and she even makes a case that you should do that before you go have a kid, and that that's a great time to really think about career path. Yeah. Um, and then she talks about, you know, uh, the men really needing to be equal partners at home, that that's very important, or or I shouldn't say men, whoever the partner is at home needs to kind of play okay. an equal part. So, okay. yeah, I, I found that really, really inspirational. And on, on tough days, I watched that TED Talk. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I should go look at that. Yeah, it, it, I've heard great things about it. And like yeah. I said, I loaded it up uh, a couple weeks ago, and I just haven't had the, the mm-hmm. chance because I've been traveling so much. Right, right. Um, She's also, her name's Cheryl. My name's yes. Cheryl. We spell it with an S. It's like a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of C Cheryls out there. aren't a lot of S Cheryls, but that was very impactful to me. That's, That's funny. Things. <laughs> yeah. Do either of you have kids? No. Mm-mm. No, okay. No, we so talked about it. Been, yeah, like, we've talked been. about it. My husband is in the same... Um, graduate program that Maggie is oh, in. Okay. So I think a couple advanced degrees have to kind of get up on the <laughs> yeah. wall before anything else happens. Yeah. <laughs> so that's um, certainly, you know, a, a conversation piece with women and, and whether they can advance in their roles in the career, mm-hmm. in, in their career um, when kids come along. And I have no experience there either. So mm-hmm. it's just kind of, do, do you guys see that on a daily basis in the corporate world? I mean, I think it's, uh, you know, people have to, I don't, I don't think we need to make special room. Uh, you know, people a lot of times talk to me about work-life balance. And, yeah. Uh, you know, I think it's something that happens automatically, and you don't need to have special arrangements. If you have passion for work and you have passion for your family, it all works out together. Uh, and, and so uh, I think a lot of women are skeptical about it, but um, it's one of the things that I think, uh, you know, in, in a very male-dominated industry, of, you know, being in a technical role, uh, people expect you to move on with your life. So I don't see personally it uh, being uh, as something that's going to be a hurdle and, oh my gosh, you know, right. I'm going to lose my career. Or um, I, my sister, who's also in a technology role, just had uh, babies okay. and, you know, twins. I talked to twins. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and, and she's not, ner- you know, I, I keep teasing her and she's not nervous about going back to work. And in fact, she has made a few trips to her office with the babies just to introduce them yeah. and, and still talk talking about work. Uh, so I think, um, you know, she's just inspirational to me that, you know, even after you have twins, you just, you know, you, you just, just keep going. You just keep going. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a mentality uh, thing as well. Mm-hmm. You know, women, there are some women who just want to stop working when they have kids and focus on that. And that's amazing, you know, that yeah. they choose to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you do want to continue in your career and keep working, then I think you have I almost wonder, and you know, if if you should kind of have some separation there, if it helps in the mm-hmm. workplace mm-hmm. and getting advancement. Yeah. If you don't really talk about it a whole lot, which is bad to say, right? <laughs> but I wonder about that point, and and I again, I don't have any experience in that right, area, right. so. And I think, as Cheryl mentioned, right, the, your your spouses, your partners are are becoming as involved in everything, you know. Yeah. But I, I mean, I come from an Indian culture background where women, you know, they were bearing the kids. So when you know, right. it, it, 
long time ago, you know, they were responsible for taking care of the kids and the men just went and worked. And, uh, and I think all of that is changing. Uh, I'm sure it's not been as mm. much in the U.S., but... Uh, now, Maggie, did your mother work when no, you were she growing was, up? No, oh, she, she didn't. Was, and what about your mother? Yes, two time, two full-time jobs. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So that's one for Maggie's mom. Right. Because exactly. okay. my mom did work also when yeah. I was growing up. Yes. And I, I think that that sometimes can be impactful as to whether a woman kind of chooses that path of career and family. Oh, I'm right. sure, yeah. Right. And yeah. in fact, a lot of times it makes you make a different decision otherwise, too. You know, I, I felt, um, you know, it's one aspect that I wish my mom continued because selfishly I loved the fact that she was home all yeah, the time when sure. I was growing up. But now, you know, uh, uh, the daughters are out. Uh, we both are here. She's back home. And really everything that she lived for, you know, past yeah. 20 years, she has nothing and and it, it's kind of sad you know and it's really hard to go back and work if you haven't, if you haven't it takes a lot of courage them. and determination and yeah. and support from your spouse to go back into work you know if you've been out for so long so I think you know it's one of those things that's always inspired me and my sister were like you know we're gonna keep going with our lives and see yeah. how it uh, how it works out so yeah. the, the other thing I would just uh, say about family. So I moved from a field-based sales role um, into a marketing role in a building, um, into an office. You know, I go okay. into an office several days a week. And um, cubicle. I, yes. Cubicle. Okay. Yes. <laughs> cubicle. Yes. Really the yes. Here. Yes. Okay, and in okay, fact, okay. on my very first day of work, my cubicle is right next to Maggie. Right. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Um, although I've since moved a couple times because we're expanding in the building so quickly. It's, they keep moving all of us around. Yeah, it's, it, the expansion is great, the moving my cube. It's, it keeps it neat, it keeps it neat. Um, so, but it's, um, it's kind of interesting because, um, you know, we're around people, like I'm around a lot more women now than I was in my sales role and you see women in the office who are pregnant and you hear about um, people that have different um, sorts of arrangements worked out and work-life things worked out and all that sort of stuff. So it's yeah. definitely been um, uh, kind of nice to be in an office and to see some models that are working for people right. because there was much less of that in field sales. Not that there were no women with children there, but certainly fewer than, um, okay. than are now in the office that we work in. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We were talking about men, you know, or, or how we feel in the workplace. Um, and a lot of the women that I've talked to really don't feel uh, like they've been, you know, like, not to use the word, mm -hmm. but to, to use the word, discriminated against uh, by men or that it's uncomfortable of mm -hmm. a setting because it's so male dominated. You guys didn't feel that way either? Is that, that what I'm getting? Um, I don't know if you want to. I mean, I, I feel like I have to stand up for myself, and I don't know if that's because I'm a woman or just because of who I am as a person. Okay. But I, I definitely um, maybe a combination feel, of both. Yeah, it might be a combination of both. I mean, I don't feel like anybody's ever been, um, well, anybody at Dell at least has ever been, you know, directly mean or derogatory toward me as a woman. Right. It's far from that, and, and Dell, I think, is actually... Um, a really great place to work as a woman. It seems so. It yeah. seems the culture is, is to encourage that thriving. Absolutely. And over the past couple of years, we've had a lot more executives, you know, move up in the ranks as women. Our, our CMO or is a woman now, and um, we have a lot of other senior executives Good. moving up as women. So that's been really great. Um, but I mean, you know, there's something about walking into a room of 80 people that have the same job you have and being the only woman. Yeah. I mean, there's a feeling kind of whether they're. Too. Whether they're, I don't think it's that the guys are sending something negative out, but it's, you know, it's notable. Right, yeah. Like, you feel it mm -hmm. when you walk in the room. and. Um, so what can all the guys watching, because I guarantee you we have a majority of guys watching at the right, moment. Right, <laughs> right. What can, you know, they do, not that they need to change their attitudes unless they are being, you know, careless uh, about right. it. No, but, but most aren't, yeah. Yeah, most aren't. Uh, but is there something that helps us or helps just the women in general because I actually find that men are as fascinated by this topic as, oh, as women are. Yeah. I, yeah. Get, I, I get most of the questions about women in technology from men. Yeah. Interesting. Huh. Yeah. So I just, yeah, is there something that you find that they can do 
to help encourage that? You know, I would I would just say that uh, have the confidence. Uh, you know, a lot of times when I walk into the room, a lot of people are like, uh, all right, a 20-something uh, is going to talk to, and most of the people that I talk to yeah. are, you know, middle-aged to uh, older uh, men. It's like, uh, can you deliver what I'm here for? Okay. And so I think uh, just going in with that confidence that, you know, women have come ways, right. uh, especially in the technology field, and so uh, we know our stuff, and as much as I can be confident on my uh, material that I want to deliver or want to talk about or what I know, uh, I think having them, um, you know, confidence in us and not giving those strange looks, really, are you going to talk really? about this? <laughs> <laughs> and I get that a lot, and, and really, I don't, uh, once the talk's over, you know, everybody is really nice yeah. and, you know, uh, nothing... Uh, against people but it's just having that confidence uh, yeah. in, in women I think is going to be very mm -hmm. important. Okay. Yeah That's I would say point. that and I think the, the guys that I work with um, that I have the best relationships with are, are kind of the ones where my being a woman just hasn't been kind of a notable part of how we interact like they okay. don't treat me differently because I'm a woman exactly necessarily yeah. but if something comes up um, like there's something high up I can't reach or, um, you know, like I need to put on lipstick before I get on a big stage and talk in front of a right. bunch of people, that that's kind of just an acceptable part of, of what happens with us too. So I think, you know, just not letting it get in the way of the relationship that a colleague has, you know, to me, that's kind of the most important thing yeah. when I work with men. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so um, just let's kind of go away from women and technology yeah. and just talk, you know, storage and, and uh, the conference itself. Uh, you, you guys said that you were having a great time here. Mm -hmm. What's in the industry, what's um, the, the one thing that you're really excited about? Um, I, I think I'm really excited to be with Dell right now. Uh, it's it's in that um, you know in that stage of developing yeah. you know storage uh, with its own IP and going out and saying hey you know we're a storage company. I think that's uh, that's the most exciting part of me being part of Dell right now in the storage uh, uh, in you know. Uh, industry and and uh, I, I think storage in general is very exciting that's where I started off my career right out of college and when I referred, got my first job with storage all I knew was it's it's a you know bunch of disk that stores <laughs> your data and I think I've come long ways from it uh, and, and there are uh, so many that's different where everybody starts <laughs> out by the way I know. <laughs> so uh, and, and there's so much more to storage than than just that and I've learned uh, a lot over the years and there's so much more to learn and, and to share that you know when I have conversations with friends uh, it's just interesting to educate them and let them know what storage is all about yeah. so I think uh, it's uh, it's going to grow because, uh, as we heard in today's keynote, the data is growing pretty rapidly, right? So storage is something that everybody's going to need. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I'm excited about a lot of our, our innovation um, around life cycle management. Okay. So um, really abstracting sort of this three or four year cycle that customers are used to having about purchasing storage. Um, and because we're abstracting the hardware, having that not be something they're really tied to anymore. You know, and seeing that across our Equalogic line and our Compellent line and our DX object storage line, like that's been really um, exciting to me because I think that that's something, it's been a long time coming. I think yeah. the industry has just trained our customers to um, just kind of get used to getting knocked around and 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 you know forced into purchasing this way and you know any every minute that they're they're taking to deal with a forklift upgrade or deal with a, a migration you know it's time that they're not spending doing what they need to do for their company you know okay. doing their job that that helps them innovate for their customers and um, I'm, I'm really excited what we're doing at Dell to kind of help them get closer to that yeah it's exciting yeah and what do you make of uh, the fluid data that's so much the theme of the conference uh, are there any thoughts that you have in terms of in terms of that I mean it's it's obvious what it is you know and it's going to move forward and it's mm -hmm. going to be fluid yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm excited about it, and, and the customers that I've talked to, um, you know, at the, the Nat, when customers visit us in Nashua and when I've been out to visit customers as well, um, yeah. seems to be resonant, you know, that idea that we are going to do a lot of that life cycle management, you know, that, that IDM, um, the, the data life cycle management and putting it in the right place at the right time yeah. behind the scenes and automate that. Again, giving them more time back to do the stuff that they want to do. Okay. And the fact that, you know, over time, 
you know, hopefully we'll be able to really integrate that across all of these great um, product lines, you know, that are starting to converge now. So um, I think that's really great. And I think, um, you know, Fluid is catchy and kind of fun. And we've had all these great kind of events that involve beer and pools that, that you know, this week that we call Fluid. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think the, the storage strategy behind it is a really exciting time, too. Yeah, I like the analogy that Jer- Darren Thomas gave in the keynote today with the bottle and, and the water fits into it. I didn't see that. It. Go, explain it. It, it was, it was really interesting. You know, <laughs> he, he picked up his bottle and he said, you know, I have fluid water in the bottle and it takes the shape of anything that uh, fits yeah. into it. And I think that's really uh, the key to what he was, you know, what we're all trying okay. to, uh, you know, tell the world about fluid data and, okay. and, and the fluid themes. So I think that. That's a very good yeah. analogy. Yeah, and Dell really is about offering the customer what they want. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I've heard uh, somebody said this the other day. Uh, Dell is the Burger King. Have <laughs> <laughs> it your way. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't know if that's. <laughs> I mean, it, it is, though. I mean, I, I, you know, part of my role is hosting customers when they visit us in yeah. the Nashua facility. We had some customers in last week, and we had 12 or 13 members of our engineering team packed in the back of the room wanting to hear what the customer's experience had been like and which of these specific features they weren't, weren't using and why and what yeah. was missing. And, I mean, it was, it was a, a great kind of voice of the customer moment to get to participate in, but that happens, you know, hundreds of times in a month, you know, across all of Dell. It's, yeah. It is very focused on, you know, what what is the experience as a customer you're having and how are we helping you, um, yeah. you know, execute your strategy for your customers better. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I've seen this theme of, of customer mm-hmm. focus, which right. is really cool to see, you know. And, Absolutely. And cool to watch from, from any company's perspective to be focused on the customer I mean, obviously that's key. I know. Now, how can we get you out of that Apple laptop? Oh, yeah. (laughs) So, good point. I uh, (laughs) I do video production. What's it going to take? uh, (laughs) You know, the only thing I have to say is that Michael Dell, actually, his first computer was uh, an Apple II, so... That's my defense. <laughs> okay. We'll have to talk about this off but camera. We can, yeah. we can certainly talk. <laughs> Good. Well, thank you guys so much for coming out and joining me and chatting with me. Oh, thank I've had you. A blast this is fun. With you. Yeah, this was fun. Really yeah. fun. Thanks for having We're us. We're looking forward to hanging out with you in the evening. Yes. Yes. Tonight. We'll have some fluid events tonight. Of course. <laughs> Twitter exactly. IDs again? Um, Storage Diva. I'm not on Twitter. Oh. We got to get Maggie up I on know. Twitter. Website, blog, anything? Um, no, not really. Okay. <laughs> Jean and I have to work on her. <laughs> All right, we're get, I'll work on that tonight with you. Okay. okay? Sounds we're good. We're gonna get her on Twitter. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you so All much. Right, thank, thank you so much. much. Yeah. Take care. Thanks. You too.